Okay, I want to kick this off and introduce Jackson and Cameron. Jackson is looking at his laptop preparing for his talk. Um, so Jackson and Cameron are two of our members here. They've been exploring different concepts here in, at Austin Lane Chain. Can you give it up for uh, Jackson? Uh, so I'm Jackson Cameron. I'm a software developer from Greenville, South Carolina. I moved here back in January 2023. I've been here for a year, 10 months now. And so I've, and I've been attending these since April. Uh, I recognized some faces back whenever I did a Node, no, it was a Next.js application integrated with the Langster backend. Really more of a proof of concept, which sort of like a template and app. So this is my second time presenting. Uh, and this is kind of, once again, in the spirit of showing crappy code that we as business applications on. Like <laughs> so yeah, this time around we did a, well, I'll give the backstory actually. So basically I, have wanted to build something that manages my emails for a long time. So my email right now is just junk, basically mainly my personal email. Just hundreds of emails flowing in, mostly marketing, a bunch of random stuff that it's hard to figure out and discern what's actually important in there and whether or not I'm gonna miss like insurance payment or like something actually important. And so we were on the same call for one of the Lane Chain community calls. Kind of threw it out there and he said he'd actually been working on something similar but for uh, work email primarily. So then we got started with uh, the Outlook. So he already had a starting point for Outlook, hooking in, pulling stuff directly out of the client, and then we just kind of got rolling from there, passing back and forth. Started with Jupyter Notebooks, moved a little bit more to scripts, and then as we got going, he kind of ran some GUI interfaces too using, was it Q we were discussing earlier? Yeah. Yeah. And hey everybody, uh, my name's Cameron Brown. Jackson said that. We actually started working on this. I had, we had shook, shook each other's hands, knew each other's names, and that's about it. So it's actually a lot of fun getting to know each other and learning along the way. You know, like he said, he was like, yeah, I have this, I want to solve this email problem. Like, I raised my hand on the call and said, I started on that, let's, let's do it. And when we started, it was pretty rough, Jupyter notebooks, everything hard-coded, very messy. Jackson's face, I wish I would have captured it. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a great starting point. There's a lot to build off of, but where I wanted to go with it was mainly like summarization, categorization, being able to find a way to discern what was actually important in my fucking like, email box, basically. It was getting to a point where I just had no idea what was going on. And there's still plenty of way to go, as you'll see, whenever we actually show some stuff, but being able to summarize, categorize, sort it out, and then Cam, I think, had some stuff. Yeah, it was actually, we thought we had the same use case, I think. <laughs> And then once we came together, it was it was very different. And to me, this is all part of a bigger uh, like mass data rag methodology. So email is great, but these same concepts apply whether you're talking about documents, you know, pulling data out of other systems, etc. So for me, it's been more of a solving the challenge of let's have a brain, let's have your brain accessible to you know, any AI tools. Plug and play, universal, you know, module learning. So, which kind of speaks to this because Cam, when I met him and kind of looked at everything he'd done to that point, was digging into loading everything from Exchange, pulling stuff out of like, you know, Power BI, and, or you know, I guess a database. So, so I don't know if you want to speak that at all. Yeah, I mean, for this demo, we're we're only dealing with email data, but really, if you looked at your calendar data, even if Within the email environment, you click at calendar data, uh, contacts and people. There are so many data, you know, things in your data that you can use that are valuable that uh, maybe people don't know how. Many of you know, especially with RAG, it's all about creating context. The more context you can create, the better your results are going to be. And I think, at least when I started, I saw that first slide, but I bought a I heard of chat RTX, bought a GPU, started slamming data in there. I was like, man, this doesn't work at all. So that's kind of what got me thinking a little bit differently about it. We're not going to go into this, but this is the tie-in for Langchain. Actually, when I started, I didn't, I didn't know anything other than Langchain. So anything that I do is pretty heavily centered on Langchain components. Yeah, so getting specific about emails, there's a lot of mess in them. So there's just random HTML embedded into it, styling, all sorts of stuff, links that you don't need. Um, sometimes it can provide context, sometimes it's stuff that you just need to 
strip out, strip it, fit it into the context, or, or get the work all together. So, so attachments, there's a lot of stuff like chains and threads. How do I tie emails together and make sure that they relate back to one another? Obviously, if you have one email and you don't have the context of the previous email, that's not something we've been able to work through just yet, but these are the types of things that kind of think through as you go forward and try to build off of what we've already done. Yeah. Even things that are very uh, organized and meant to be there, like legal disclaimers, email signatures, that creates a big mess when you're when you're trying to use your data in this fashion. So there are a lot of challenges, uh, even you know, like handling dates and, and converting dates. There, it's much more than I thought it was. In fact, I think it's probably the hardest, one of the hardest data sets to work with. So I, I always like to, I guess, torture myself and just start with the hardest thing. And then the high volume part of it is something that I think sparked Cam's interest because he's working on it a lot. It doesn't sound like he's on the fire hill. So just a good way to like organize things, be able to pull relevant data out of it that's coming in at a high volume. Project challenges, I mean, there weren't a ton, but it was mainly just this workflow of just two people whenever they could. Hey, what did you do last weekend when I was away or and stuff like that? But um, try to iterate on this, especially when we, we did start with Jupyter Notebooks. Collaborating on that was kind of a pain. Found our way around it. A lot of copy paste is what it ended up. Data sets, work, email was kind of a gray area. So trying to figure out what we wanted to use as a data set. He got it to work pretty well with the Enron email data set, which is when you kind of read through some of the emails, vastly different from the way we communicated our email now. I don't think they realized that, that could be pulled out the word the way it was. So like you kind of read through that, it was interesting. And then some of the prompt engineering and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to add. Yeah, and actually we what we'll see today, we didn't go too far into the prompt engineering. There's a lot of room for uh, taking it to that next level. So it's very based on and some of the things that I've started throwing in, at least I think the observability and being able to evaluate it is very in some cases difficult and uh, built some little utilities that at least help me with that. Probably the biggest challenge for on this is uh, thank you to Jackson for rolling with it because going a little bit cowboy, well, pretty much the whole time up to this point. We got it, we were hacking it together one way or another. So the Jupyter Notebook thing was a learning curve for me. That was where he was comfortable and then we flipped it back to scripts, which felt like it was more what I was used to and more comfortable with and like an inevitable place to like have to go with it on his end of things. But um, some of the models and tools we use, that we basically ran everything locally. Started using Llama 3.2 here over the last week or so. Um, Nomic Embed for embeddings. He actually added all the ChromaDB, MongoDB, Neo4j. Um, ChromaDB obviously is way more out of the box than the other two, but um, that was really where he got it. I don't think anyone I've talked about this, so why don't you start with ChromaDB? I saw it in a couple places and just rolled with it. Yeah, yeah let's go. Probably all of us. I, I've had to be very intentional about blocking things out, at least for the time being. I can't get distracted. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to pick something and go with it. Um, then the local aspect of it, we were working with our work email a decent amount. So, like, you know, didn't want to send that over the wire, didn't want it to land maybe somewhere where it shouldn't or get trained over, have a coworker send yeah. a prompt or something, and they're like, hey, my name's in here. I, I, I think as far as the security and privacy, uh, that's a, even on the first slide, I had something. That's a whole other discussion, and anyone who's into the uh, security privacy aspect of this, I'd love to. I'd love to chat. Running this all on your locally on your laptop, of course, there there are better ways. But I think what's pretty amazing is you can disconnect your NIC, your internet completely, and still still have access to these. Now, I'm going to jump into the notebook that I've already uploaded, and we can kind of show because there's a couple steps here. But yeah, it's in uh, the browser, the white. This is mine here? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so I'm not going to get too in depth, I'm just kind of give an overview. And then some of the stuff that we've done, I say we mainly can over the last week, has changed quite a bit. But this is kind of, I mean, some of the same concepts and stuff are there. I'm using a lot of the same tool stuff. So uh, this 132 client, this is something that I think is really relevant to bring up because we're accessing the emails directly that's on your computer. So instead of going in, and we talked, I think, earlier about why didn't we maybe use like Microsoft Graph API or, or some other access for SMTP. And just this seemed like the most direct way and the safest way without having to like get some ethically gray areas with, with work data or anything like that and run everything locally. 
Um, so this right here is just a basically list your folders out, get access to all of your Outlook folders and their IDs. And Outlook, um, that's just to basically go ahead and set up any config files that you have. I do have an EMD file like example, so if you did want to run this yourself, you could go through and piece that together. You know, say you have afterwards and want to do that. And we were passing around a lot of config variables between ourselves, so like just back and forth. This seemed like the easiest way to set all this up was copy and paste the config class in here. Um, Define all our models up front. Schema for structured output, so this is a model for the structured output that I was using. It was basically built a classification chain. Which was what was feeding. It ended up working out with summaries because we were able to break things down into smaller, more relevant chunks. And then it also helped with the categorization. So I ended up using this, I'll show that in a second, for a way to move email around our actual outlook and you know, based on the category that came up with. And uh, Kareem helped me a little bit with pieces of this. And I also noticed an interesting point here. Some of the, if, if you add to this, this Python model and get more structured output out of it, I, but it basically, but like, it can add context further down the chain. So if you can find a little more relevant chunks out of that, it can aid you later in the process. This is a long method or option to pull out emails from our Outlook client. And this is yeah. So you'll see the attributes that we used right there. That's actually super, super simplified from what's available. You know, we're talking about like conversation IDs and being able to keep track of entire threads. This is really pretty stripped down, but there are a ton of options there. This is basically just defining, yeah. so define scheme for structure output, classification chain. So it's going to say this one. Yeah, so this is actually what's moving the emails to different folders, mapping it to the categories of folders, generating the embeddings. I had something here specifically to strip out URLs just to get certain things to fit in context windows and stuff like that. And then actually generate summaries, classify them, and move them to the appropriate folders. So this is a lot of the meat of it. Um, I built it off of, it was basically us cobbling this thing together, um, this function. So there was already some stuff here for generating the embeddings, and then I added some pieces for generating some summaries, summarization steps. And then finally, going into, this is just what executes it at the end. And then this is basically the, the prompts and everything to define like a data summary. So I had two separate scripts, basically, you know, one, and it was built off of everything that Cam did, and just stapled it in here. And he, Ran with it um, with some of the GUI interface stuff that he did. But these prompts are just generating a summary. This is a basic summarization chain. And then finally, it will go through each category that you already defined and then generate summaries for each category. So uh, I'll show that here in a second and write it to a markdown file, which I believe should be right here. So I redacted a bunch of stuff from this, but this is some things that I received like sometime last week. Um, so you'll see like some. Yeah, I have Azure DevOps as one of my categories. So it's going through, basically listing out action items off of these as well, giving you summaries for each email. Um, gives you a full summary based off of all of those items that are listed. Uh, my company's out of South Carolina, so some of it is related to an update section. And the update section is a lot of stuff related to the hurricane that just passed through. And so people provide help or like different things related to uh, workflow in the context of that. So, and then the other big one is the marketing and spam stuff. Though. So I just wanted to be able to pull those out, ideally to leave it. I think you, we've both been able to spot certain things we, we had missed just looking at our inbox, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Even seeing things worded in a different way for me. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I should pay attention to that. <laughs> right, yeah. Now, there, there's random stuff that comes up now when I look at it, I probably should answer that. But, but yeah, I mean, this is just a basic summary, not to go too in depth with it. But you can see it's pulling out status reports, it's pulling out meeting requests. And so. so there's so much you can do with that. I mean, whether it's drafting a response to the emails, mess with that a little bit. I think, like I said, once you have the data process and structured into these vector data stores and databases, it's pretty almost what you can do with it. So now I'll just kick it over. We'll look at the script or the IDE version that we have here. So like that, I threw in some GUI components, and really this could be a Claude Dev demo, <laughs> because I did all of the GUI with Claude Dev. So I describe things, or take screenshots, and then point out where I wanted these changes. I referenced the script that it needs to turn on the back end, and it's, uh, done, it's absolutely blown away. <laughs> so if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely do.
Yeah, one, one cool thing that he did yesterday, he showed me, he took a screenshot of this, opened up a whole separate window, told it to generate the same UI, and then gave it the script that's actually you know, functioning in the background with this GUI interface, and then said, basically tie all these components together and just work basically the same thing as this. One, yeah, one prompt and it's functioning. Yeah. Okay, so this is built uh, interface components. This is Q, I guess. Will inform you of that. <laughs> QT, I, QT. I didn't select it. Actually, Claude Dev did. So I have some of this data. This is already staged, so I will just click through this, and then if we have time or you guys want to, we can run it. Um, I'm pretty confident it runs. It runs well. Give me the demo. Yeah, we will. I'll click through these screens first. So ideally, you know, you, even, you don't even need a GUI, depending on what you're trying to do. For this summarization, you would really just set this up as a schedule task, and it would be in your inbox or in your Obsidian or wherever. This is helpful for demonstration, though. So we have it set up to select your date range. This is the These are the dates of the emails you want to process and embed. And then we have this step that does the categorization. So this will go through the same process Jackson talked through, and then it will embed the categories into ChromaDB. So, and I didn't realize this till today because I use a desktop, and when I busted out my laptop, there's major resolution problems, so I apologize. And you probably can't even see it, but the categories are embedded in Chroma. So, very helpful for additional context. And one of the questions I still don't know the answer to is once we, if you do the categories first, and then you do the summarization, does it, is there any, does it make any difference if the summary includes the categories or not? And that's actually, some of these I've kind of set up so that you can run basically in loops, export the results, and then be able to compare them really quickly. Yeah, so this is the summarize step. Uh, there's some drop downs we have built in here so you can use the different, you can choose which model you want to use. Of course, this has been heavily centered around local llama, so that's all you see here. And then once the summaries are embedded, just like the summaries are embedded into ChromaDB, just like the categories, then you run this a map, plot awesome. summaries map reduce methodology, and that's what creates the uh, that overall summary. And I'll show you, like Jackson said, I was using the, I flipped over to the Enron data set. Earlier today I ran it for a whole year, at least from Sally Beck's one year of emails, and this is what it came out with. And you can define these categories. You know, his is a little bit different. This is by date. And then category and subcategory. And you know, I'm not Sally, so it looks pretty good to me, but I can tell you <laughs> when I used my actual email data, I was like, wow, yeah, this is actually really super helpful. So I'm not gonna take you through that entire thing. So then this latest step, I mean past the GUI. When we were talking, it, it's like even testing, you have to go in and delete the data every time you run it, you know, run the process and then delete a lot of back and forth. So integrated MongoDB to keep track of the jobs so that when you rerun it for this, if it's already run that date range, it will just skip those emails, say, hey, we already took care of that, and we're just gonna pick up the delta. So um, in a real, if you're really using this, I think that would be super, super helpful. And then that took me down to into um, exploring Neo4j, and that's where my excitement really exploded. And I haven't done a ton with it in this, but I do have something that can kind of help illustrate. There's a retriever, and this is actually a Langchain Neo4j adapter, text to cipher, and sorry, you can't see it, but you do like top people, and you can ask real questions like, what was, who are the top senders for Sally or whatever. So this error because, as you can see, I have set up drop downs for, to compare OpenAI versus Alama versus Grok. So you can run the same query and see which one actually works. And this has actually been super fun. Several times found myself just like playing with this and then like, oh yeah, I actually have things, other things I should, should be doing. Um, you know, as far as the utility functions, little stuff like this is helpful. There's a show schema. 
and you can see the schema of the uh, graph database. Um, and then there's a visualization. Well, I'll just I'll just show some of these that I already did. That's not it. Really. So like I said, the using just the person, the email, and the subject is pretty limited. And this is what it came up with as far as creating those relationships. But the more data that you have in there, or if you have other data sources, I, I think, and this is where I hope, I'd love to hear more uh, people who know more than I do, but I think with the graph, that's where you can really create the additional context and really, really tie things together when you're dealing with mass amounts of data. So I'm, I'm very excited about this part. Yeah, and I think that's, I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean, there's tons of little things that talk about, but uh, I'm more interested in questions. So I'll, I'll come off with a couple of questions here um, as I'm multitasking. My apologies to everyone who's trying to log in our sessions interface. Apparently it is kicking with us. So um, you mentioned that you hadn't looked at some of these technologies day one starting these. So can you describe a little bit about your journey from, hey, I'm going to do, I'm going to approach a business problem. I'm going to categorize my emails provide some sort of clarity into the stream of crap coming in the box, right? To ha having, uh, to encountering some of the some of the tools that you showed us along the way. Because you mentioned that they weren't really on your radar before. Can you describe a little bit about that and the insights that we're able to get? Well, I, like I said, I, I somehow came across LangChain. I don't even remember how. It was probably in the same search that I was like, how do you download Python? And it's, it's really just for me been like, what are the different technologies that I hear the most about as I'm reading through these demos or these other articles? And there's not been a lot of R&D. It's really for me, it's just like choose something and go. So I don't know if that, if that answers your question. Uh, I, don't, I don't, there's no methodology for me. I'm just really winging it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I, I think a lot of it was just Hey, can we solve something here? Is there, I, I think in my last presentation I gave, I said one of the things that I come on is tool selection and maybe you're thinking certain tools or hey, I want to try something new here. That extends the amount of time I got to spend to try and figure this whole thing out and figure out if two days of value that I'm actually trying to build here. So instead of trying to get from point A to point B by reinventing the wheel eight different ways, I know how to do it one. And I think that there's a lot of obvious options that we just kind of brought to you. So, audience, there is microphones all about and hidden around here. Yeah, it's like over at that part. You can't categorize your emails, like delete the ones that you don't need. Because, like, well, basically, organization wise, mm -hmm. can it organize your emails towards where it doesn't delete the important ones? Yeah, so that was one of the things I didn't want to give it keys to delete anything, especially when I was just testing through stuff. But you can move it around through your Outlook using the same. Function. So I basically wanted to find the junk emails and say, let me read through those and make sure they're junk first, and then delete those. But you could theoretically let it delete your emails. So and I, on my laptop, I can show like four or five folders I have set up with all the emails, and it's, and it's pretty pretty accurate. Yeah. Well, that Gmail one, so we're kind of on the side. There's a similar version of this that ties, uses the Gmail API. And that one was set up, it will run and then send, send it. You could, we're using this Pi Win32. You can do anything. It's not limited to Outlook. It's Microsoft platform across the board. So I've set it up. Yeah, you could have it draft a response to the email and actually send it if you wanted to. I mean, that's. Yeah. I don't think I'm interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Would it be pretty easy to transfer that over to using whatever the, the cloud equivalent is, the graph API? Yeah, the, the Gmail version, it's the same. Everything is the same except your data source. Like you're grabbing it from the API and then you I process it the same way through the same, you know. I can see there being some differences in the structure of the data maybe that you have to account for, but I'm, we're not doing a ton in terms of like structuring the data down. Like we're, we're taking a lot of raw email data and just popping it in there. And there's some stuff that we've picked out and there's definitely more that we could include, but. Yeah, that's a good point. And my workflow has been like, okay, here are the attributes from Outlook, and I'm talking to uh, OpenAI or 
these are the attributes from Outlook. Convert these to, um, there was one for Mac mail. I can try to um, at the native client on Mac. And it just, you know, switches them out and you're good to go. And the way, like I said, for me, it's like trying to use that this modular approach of, okay, your data loader is different, everything else past that is pretty much the same. You can use this one. I think this one works. Yeah, yeah. So you said it can draft responses too, right? So depending on, so like say for instance, I get an email for work, right? And I want to, because I use ChatGPT to basically for my replies. Can I use this to just type in a quick reply and fix it up and then send it? That's what I do. I mean, really, it's once you understand the APIs and services you're trying to look into, or in this case, it's the Win32 com client that we're basically accessing. I mean, you should be able to plug it in any spot. So yeah, I mean, you can just, anything that you can do, you can program. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and he can. He, I think, is very excited about the way it looks into everything, like whether it's Excel or anything, because you can generate Word documents using the same client. That was what we were, we were trying to figure out the best way to actually spit out the like, summary at the end. Was it like maybe we use the same thing, put in a Word document, kind of land on just crank it out and mark it out and put it in the city, but you could change the workflow however you want. I think that Jupyter notebook would be a decent starting point. Yeah. Well, I think we're reminded that every person uses email very differently. Yeah, a lot of different use cases and ways that you can customize it. So, right? I have a question. So, very cool presentation. It sounds, or you may have stated this in the beginning, right? I'm going to ask again, what's the problem you're trying to solve here? Because when I'm thinking of a similar application, my first, my, my, my approach is that my inertia comes from, I can do some of these things already within my Gmail or Outlook. Now what I would love to see is because I have conversations in my Outlook, I have conversations in Slack, if I can somehow start merging those two so that I uh, meant to build a story. That's something that I... That's exactly what, how I'm thinking about it, right? Of course, I, I think I'm very excited about the graph. They basically able to tie everything together. And, you know, like we said, this is not a necessarily something that solves a problem. I mean, it does and it doesn't. I mean, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, yes. It has all these capabilities above and beyond that. For me, it's more like how do you how do you build that brain, your brain, your digital brain, and especially when you start talking about the agentic workflows. I mean, if you think, you know, really, I think this type of thing could be like a tool. And so Slack, that would, could be another tool and you have an agent, that's kind of how I thinking about it. I don't know that that's the right approach. I'm totally winging it and just learning these things as I'm experimenting. Yes. Well, I mean, when we talked the first time, his pain points were way different than the ones I was thinking of. And it had to do a lot with his workflow, his job and stuff. So he would already been finding ways to look into different areas, uh, whether it's teams or you know, different databases and stuff, and from your job, your workflow, spreadsheets and exchange, or anything like that. So he's been trying to figure out how to cobble all of that together. And he's starting to piece things together. This is really just a piece of it that I have. I'll give you an example, like having, a, I'll take a call from a customer or a client who is, I have an escalation. Hey, what's going on? Maybe I didn't even realize that was going on yet. So the idea is, as soon as I answer the phone, I have right in front of me, here are all the most recent ticket, you know, like tickets. IT tickets they've had, here's all the notes from those tickets, here are all the most relevant emails from that person, the other discussions I've had. Like having an immediate quick access to your information is where I'm yeah. Before you hear the emails from Outlook, you wrote the code yourself. Uh, did you try to find a, a tool already available online, like an online chain like tool, or was there anything at all? Or? I think what he built, I mean, Win32 Com Cloud is close get with, uh, with directly accessing email from Outlook. And I think uh, we had a conversation earlier about, you know, should we have hooked it directly to the SMTP server or anything like that? That's, that's not, 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 not my question. Okay. What, what you, you did, you could actually wrap that into a uh, IT tool and then publish that. Is, is there anyone who's tried to do that already for Outlook or other Microsoft tools? Uh, did you like look, look, look that up or consider it? Or? There was actually that competition that Kareem was in 
One of the final was was a Apple plugin that does something very similar. But he's talking about an actual Apple tool that like an agent can use or something. I don't think, I don't I didn't do any research on that. No. I'm, I'm sure that somebody has a plugin or something that could use like an Apple tool. But yeah, I don't know if I understand your question, but I was I've almost thought of this as like yeah, you can almost have an API that takes care of this particular process. I don't know if that's... Well, did they tell me the APIs that, of course, but the, the question was like, in, in like, if you, in the LinkedIn community, you have all sorts of like components that have been provided by the community, and uh, when you use those, they will go get the, the, your API endpoints, whatever, and then you send it back as, as uh, LinkedIn documents, uh, like objects. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're already formatted. And so uh, what you've actually done, you could wrap that out into a proper, like, uh, Langchain tool on the intelligence and have it used by, by the community. Other people would be actually using them directly. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Well, the, every almost everything in here is uh, our Langchain. It's you know, so like even the message loader for handling emails and formats it into the document. But he, he's he's getting so there's he's publicly accessible in that way. But there's publicly accessible tools that you can give Elba, and he's basically saying we can do something similar to that. So what are, the, what are the questions to uh, we have for the presenters today? Okay, well, I, I really want to thank you two for putting this together and for sharing us, uh, sharing with us how you've been able to explore using LangChain and all these other cool tools and interact with your email. Uh, I am eager to see more about your explorations of Cypher, graph databases, uh, writing context to your data, visualizing the data. You know, you both work in spaces that there's a lot of that information, a lot of, a lot of additional data that provides context. And I, I don't know about all of you, but like I, I get stuck in this world where I'm going through a summary of an email chain, trying to figure out what the heck's going on. And uh, the ability to start to utilize these next generation systems to categorize, and I assume, hearing this, this and both of you talk, that uh, taking action and, and, and next actions out of this are something that in your view for the future? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, looks like Sword's having some cha challenges getting logged on, so we're going to go ahead and put together our panel on AI software development. Hey, Rob, Jackson, and Ryan, can you come to the front and let's grab one of these white chairs up here?